teachings and the stories that you shared. Um, oh yeah, I'll speak up so you can hear me. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's and, okay. Yeah. yeah. And we might not hear anyway, and the and the uh, media has to pick you up. Okay. <laughs> um. So because this is what my mom has asked me to do, um, for a couple weeks now, she's wanting me to visit. So I'm. I apologize for taking this long, but I'm really, really, um, yeah, happy and honored and um, just grateful that, uh, yeah, we can maintain this relationship and I hope to continue to come out and see you and hear more, um, yeah, about our family that's out here. And for for you, um, I'd like to share um, what I've learned um, or relearned, I guess I should say, since I've been home. I moved back to uh, Sook territory last spring. Um, I moved back from Halifax. Oh my. From Chibukchuk <laughs> in Mi'kmaq territory. And I was there for five years. Mm. Um, but as you know, I, I grew up with my mom. Um, her Indian name is Quetzalcoatl, which was Granny Mary George. Um, Mm. Louie and, and Danny and Harry and Josephine and Grandpa Eddie's mom. Oh, yeah. And so, but her English name is Charlene. <laughs> and um, Grandpa Bob, um, I, I'm sharing this because this is, I want to show you that I've learned. Um, so his mom, uh, Granny Sarah Daisy Lazar. Um, who is the eldest daughter to Granny Ida. And Granny Ida was the eldest daughter to Granny Annie Jones, who was elder sister to Quisto Jones. And so that's the grandpa that yeah. you grew up with. Yeah. Um, so I really, really appreciate, yeah, just hearing yeah. that you're the, our, like our family's living connection to, to that incredible person. Oh, oh yeah, you have... Roots in Renfrew, <laughs> mm -hmm. from your great, great grandmother, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, that's Granny Sarah Daisy and Grandpa Bob's dad, Eddie, Grandpa Eddie George. They had an arranged marriage um, from uh, the eldest daughter of Granny Ida and then the son of um, Quetzalcoatl or Mary George and Saud or uh, George Sr. I can't remember mm -hmm. his other name. He was from Discovery Island. Mm -hmm. um, and quite not of sick. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever met my dad. Um, his name is Talitmiston or Glenn Jim. He's uh, from Saikum. No, I think I just met him, but not, uh, you know, not acquaintances. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Saint is just for, further away from yeah. here. Um, but then his his family comes from Wasaikum, and um, one of his grandmothers came from Penelicate. Mm. And then, actually, on his his dad's side, he's um, Mexican, actually. So mm. his mixed um, roots uh, to where Mexico occupies today. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Yeah. You want to say hi? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, I'm glad you came. I hope my welcome was uh, adequate. I'm not oh, sure. No, it, it, awesome. I really, really, yeah, it filled my heart. To hear all of that and to understand what's happened here and what continues to happen. So, um, this is my name is Dr. Collins. I come from the Kwakwak Kiwas Nation um, on Mantegila, and I have ties. Um, my oldest daughter married in, in Papua. Um, she actually got married on the beach there, and mm. uh, I have three granddaughters with her. Also, we just had a great grandson born a couple of weeks ago. And so they just brought him home not that long ago, so they're at the chair as well. Oh, so um, basically, um, mm -hmm. the work that I kind of do is uh, against uh, fish farms, basically. It's where I like to do my focus. Um, and right now, we're in the process of uh, getting ready to move back into our home territory where our people haven't lived there for 70 years. No safe fire, no drumming has been in our territory for 70 years. So right now we have a little house that's been built for us. It's, it's finished, but uh, the road bringing it into our territory is uh, an old logging road as well. And it's much more <laughs> overgrown than, than here. 
the crews have been going in and clearing the path. Um, my my Makola, uh, he's gone a few times with trips with um, various uh, organizations and what and people that just want to go and help. And so basically, it's clearing the logging road so we can get our youthy in, which is mm. our little big house we call it. And uh, once we're there, um, an IMAC chief. Uh, <laughs> auctioned off our land and it's being clear cut as well. Um, he also has uh, a, uh, three fish farms in front of my home village and he's now applied for a fourth. Mm -hmm. So we picked a place strategically to be. It's called Halidi, which is a place of healing. And um, we're, where we're going to move right, right into the clear cut to, to stop it, as well as uh, the fish farms that are in front of my home village, uh, the three fish farms are a 20 minute uh, speedboat away. So um, this is kind of um, what I've uh, dedicated my life. And it's like, um, you know, like you said, you know, the generations ahead, you know, I look at my great grandson now and I know that, you know, the urgency and the importance of doing this work is, is, is compounded you know, with each child that's born. Mm. And um, so, yeah, so uh, we, we live in Wysanek. Um, we've been there for um, quite a while now. But uh, I was born and raised in Yalis, Alert Bay. Yeah, but I don't come from there. Mm. And uh, yeah, mm. that's, that's pretty well it. I come from the Han Youth House and the uh, Mm -hmm. The uh, Madelby House, our, our press, are the butterfly and the seagull. I'm partial to the seagull because it keeps me very humble. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be here and just to hear Thank your you. wonderful words and uh, just to know and let you know, you know that um, I have a responsibility too for these old girls here because of my great grandchildren and that. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I take those responsibilities very serious, so uh, you'll probably see me a bit more because uh, right now we're running into a short window of time of being able to bring our house in uh, because of winter and uh, and that. So basically it's, uh, you know, like I've been involved with the youth, um, uh, with part of the uh, legislative um, actions that happened with the youth there and um, been very very inspired by our youth and our women mm -hmm. and uh your territory is beautiful <laughs> well Thank welcome you. welcome you all sure? yeah that would be nice i would really appreciate that okay and nice ladies, and loud yeah so. speak up yeah <laughs> okay okay um uklama i klapis vistakshisla anakla uh um, Uhukwa Umiexu QSMT uh, Crystal Clappus, Mama Smi MT um, Crystal Clappus, QSMT Tutuchkiax, um, Uhukwa Naniexu Chester Clappus Mit, um, Uhukwa Naniexu Zelta Clappus. Um, so my name is I Clappus, I come from Kuwait, just up the coast. Um, my mother is Crystal Clappus or Tutuchkiax. Uh, my grandparents are the late Chester Clappus, um, and my grandmother is Zelta Clappus. Um, my great grandparents, sorry, um, were um, Annie Williams from Keltsmit and Housett, and um, Andy Clappus from Kuwait. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> that would be Chester is an old, is an old, or was an old friend of mine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Marie, I don't know if you knew yes, Marie. Yes, my auntie Marie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think. So it's a small world sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, welcome. Yeah, You're part of it. <laughs> yeah, it's really good to be here with you now. Um, I camped a lot here with my mom growing up, so I have a ton of those fond memories of before the road was paved and coming through the Lake Cowichan Way. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So thank you for taking the time to be with us. I'm I'm really excited to meet you. Um, Valine, who is just here, and Joe. Valine's a really dear friend. Um, 
Mm. So I'm, I just missed them, obviously, by a few days, but I think we'll be around going forward. So, mm. yeah. I'm really pleased with you. You're part of our cultural revival, both of you, all of you. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, and, this and this is my other friend, um, Sasakwalis' son. Oh, hi. Nivlam, Makwala, Skaitamach, Kwagyos, Tawitsis, Mumpigila, Kriklasatimach, Tru Namgis. I've got uh, connections to the five tribes of the Kwakwakwak Nation. Uh, from my mother's side, I belong to the Umbus House. Um, the Zamantagila tribe, They're the warrior tribe of our nation, and on my father's side, I come from the Quadil. Um, my great great grandfather was Haifun, uh, he was a chief of the La Luxon Dayunamima, and on my mother's side, my great great grandfather was Kakuth, who was uh, also a Zamantagila chief. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my connections are all with uh, the Kwakwakwak, and there's a line going to clink it. Uh, my mom won't let me forget that. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's who I am, and uh, very uh, honored to be here. So oh, neat. <laughs> uh, I have, that's up around the Alert Bay, thereabouts, is it? Yeah, that's yeah. Right town. Yeah. My grandmother was from Nimkish. Oh. oh. Yeah, she was... Um, Grandpa got, had, got her at a potlatch, mm. one of the last potlatches that were allowed. Yeah. And she came here and had my dad and his brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just found out her name, but it's on my computer and I'll have to... Okay, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, well, my, I'm getting digital. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be digital these days. Yeah. 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 And, uh... Charlie Kuhn and oh, the Alfreds, you know. Yeah, okay. My dad's cousins are up there. The uh, oh, I forgot the names offhand, right? So the Alfreds, the Mountains, yeah, yeah. were my dad's cousins, okay. and um, the Wests, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Charlie Kuhn finished high school with me. Oh. He moved back to his village island, I hear. Mm. Yeah. 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 So, oh. us old folks sort of, well, the boarding school is sort of a gift in some ways. Mm. In one way, anyway, is the fact that all these kids were put into one place from all over, you know. Right. And that was sort of a good and bad thing for the government because it gave us a connection, a, a something in common, a, a brotherhood or a sisterhood. You know? mm -hmm. And that helped our um, unity in a way that the government wasn't um, expecting. You know? mm -hmm. they, they were supposed to continue with the disunity. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, we also brought some uh, gifts for you. Um, this was uh, given to me by a really good friend of mine from Gitsan territory. Him and his family were fishing on the CN, and um, it's half smoked. Um, oh, yeah, neat. Savory. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> cool, cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So this is some medicine that I harvested in my garden, um, and this is both mostly coming from my mom. Here's um, some half-smoked candied fish that she did up. Oh, neat! And, yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> some some decoration for your car that she also made. Oh, that's um, a little <laughs> cedar rope, yeah, with some that. shells from um, This is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like. Uh, no, I accepted the offer I can't refuse. <laughs> and I have to now, with you, continue our quest, our journey, our reason to be and being mm -hmm. um, is 
up there here, the forest. Our great mother is seeing to that, you know, and that we do all come together and you have gifted my soul in your circle here. It's a blessing that is beyond Bibles, beyond knowledge, past sublime into the spirit world. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what our great mother and even the way cathedrals are trying to preserve and submit in as much as uh, I do have, um, you know, some bad feelings towards the uh, ancient Europe or the old European churches. I still feel that there was an initial good intention. And um, one sociologist told me that, well, Bill, religion is kind of a, a two-way sword or that, she said. Um, we have the holy people who want to be in control and you have the church members and said that we control knowledge in the churches in Europe and we do the research and we teach our congregations submission to the church. And so um, uh, that tore the church to the elite and it became an industry. And I think that's why um, and how now church, now religious thought is starting to try to reconcile itself within itself and um, become a more understanding um, body of itself, just like you are given yourself here. Um, so the elite are now going into the forest and realizing their churches were trying to mimic the forest. Mm -hmm. And that is why I feel that I don't mind uh, religion, you know. I think it uh, has its good intentions. Um, some of the Eastern churches were are sort of more wholesome to all. You know, I can probably say the Buddhists are um, caring and helpful. And, you know, other churches are more imperialistic, you know. It's a business. And uh, a big business, you know. So, um, I don't know why I'm meandering this way, but it, these gifts, when we give to each other, it binds us, and thank you, Tako, Tako. You have submitted me and committed me to our being and our doing. And that is why I'm so grateful now that I realize that this life is worth it. You've all got uh, endless roads of graves, you know, like our village is full of about 25 or 30 suicides, mm -hmm. about 25 or 30 um, drug and alcohol related deaths. Mm -hmm. And I can count probably about eight or 10 natural deaths, you know. So, and yet now my village is coming through a um, very difficult time. I think that even white people understand, you know, because um, I think the horror of uh, the wars and that, you know, have 
crippled generations. You know, I, I logged with guys who, you know, were in the Second World War and and how they grew up disjoint and that disjoint, disjunct, you know, tearing apart of self is still echoing through the whole society, you know. And um, I know uh, I worked with one girl, I always remember this, a pretty blonde woman from England. And we were walking from work in, or something like that in the uh, Candle River. And I said, we smelled, I caught a sweet love smell. And she's, she says, oh, that's, that's, she started falling apart and crying. She started saying, she's in, she's in the pile. We have to get her out of the pile. And, and she was from London, you know. And she wanted to dig her dead friend up. And so that left the very, I, I know, to, to tell you this is shaking for me, you know, because I, it gave me an insight into all people's sufferings. And that we, in fact, have to have a natural reconciliation to ourselves that perhaps our churches will start to realize and understand and that we will have our religious spiritual sharings specifically addressing ourselves as our great mother does up there and brings down here so I'm blabbing and preaching too much and I you know I think we should I should I have a girlfriend and uh, she, uh, when I spoke in Victoria a few times, she came up to the, she was sitting in front there, sort of, in the front, then she came up to the church, I came up to the stage and kicked me in the shin in front of <laughs> 300 people. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I better think of that and then call it a day. <laughs> <laughs>